Welcome to Geek's Corner. I'm Mr. Daps. I'm Katie. A woman named Rose Trophy, earlier this year, became the eldest junior park ranger inducted at Grand Canyon National Park. The Grand Canyon National Park has been around for 100 years. She is 103. Aww. She's three years older than the park. Good for her. That's She's impressive. She's a junior ranger? Yes. She's a junior ranger. <laughs> I love it. I hope she got a badge. Cool. Oh, I hope she got a hat. My name's Cameron. Very good. She used the hashtag Geeks Corner on Twitter. That's the hashtag Geeks Corner to talk to us about your favorite elderly junior park rangers or whatever else we're talking about tonight. Or if your name is Rose, we'd love to interview That'd you. So you can... Yeah. Anyone named Rose. With the last name Trophy. That's a solid Rose name. Tro I was thinking that when you were saying that. I was like, name. that's a really good name. They don't make names like that anymore, do they? Well, they do. Nobody uses them, though. That's also true. They, they use fake names. You know what's a good name? Eunice. But what are we talking about tonight? The Walt Disney Company, which really? just got very big. Like, it was big before, it's, and now it's, it's big. very big. It has reached you know, Leviathan status. Big. If you were to take... <laughs> we should have made this graphic before, Tyler. We should have taken a map of Galaxy's <laughs> Edge. And gone, And been Walt like, this is the Walt Disney Company. 21st century and Fox. <laughs> You know, I saw one of those Missed maps today. You guys don't understand how big Galaxy Edge is. The no, entire United States can fit inside Galaxy Edge. You don't understand how big the Walt Disney Company just got. It's it's crazy. So we were talking a little bit before the show. The Walt Disney Company now owns Avatar. Which is kind they of They own <laughs> The Simpsons. Yes. They own X-Men, which American we're going to return to. Um, that, yes. Uh, Anastasia. Anastasia. Anastasia is now well. She's not a Disney princess yet, but it's it's just a she's matter a of time. She's a princess owned by Disney. Right. How long do you think it's going to be before they make a live action version of that one? I was say uh, five years. Uh, the Simpsons, <laughs> because that'd be terrifying. Well, oh, that'd no. be terrifying. I was thinking Anastasia. Like they're making five years. Some decades But Disney's. But they need to now. make the Disney version. The the basically it's almost the same with the same music, but live people. And there aren't actually people unless they're CGI. CGI. And yeah. Titanic. Uh, Titanic is now part of, of part of our world of Disney. Um, what else we got? The original Star Wars, I believe, is now owned by Disney. <laughs> Which means that release should be coming out soon. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's just a matter of time till we get the new Blu-ray with all. Well, no, it'll be next year, and they'll have yeah. all nine. Mm. Unless with, they do eleven with original theatrical cuts, that's what I want. Original theatrical cuts. Do you think we'll actually get that? I think we will. I hope so. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we will. I'll I, give George I, Lucas two dollars. We're, we're going to get them, and they're going to be boxed separately than the nine box set. It's going to be a separate thing you can buy. It's going to be so expensive. It's going to be very expensive. Or it'll be like the Lord of the Rings extended edition, where you can watch either one. No, no, I don't, I think they will package them separately. I think so. You will, have to buy both. Yeah, yeah, you will have to buy the original theatrical cut, and they won't like put the, it on Disney streaming service. No, no, no. I no, think no. you're right there. No. Yeah, uh, it'll be a separate collector's edition purchase. It's going to be. I'm going to guess. I'll put this down, Bailey. You can quote me on this. I'm going to say three hundred dollar package that is just the original, like seventy seven beginning theatrical cuts with like a bunch of like picture books and yada yada yada. Yeah, all the bonus features yeah. that we've but all wanted. But they'll, they'll charge a good few and I'm gonna guess about $300 for that with like original so remastered audio. Now, yeah. Start uh, saving a dollar and a I'm, day. I'm going to buy it. Keeps Darth Vader away? No. no. Is that apples? <laughs> a um, dollar a day. <laughs> Who does keep away? Who? No, it doesn't keep away anybody. You're gonna use it to buy the DVD, the blue It's box. gotta keep somebody away. That's Actually, right. I feel like you need that in four, 4K. Yeah. So really, now you need to get the uh, the really fancy speakers, 4K uh, um, TV screen. Like the bendy one? You need at least yeah, 4,000 TV one. screens. Yeah. And what's the new surround sound that you can buy that's ridiculously Atmos. expensive? Atmos. Atmos. You need Atmos. It's coming down to price, actually. It's not that bad. Pretty affordable. Oh, that's good. Is it like $1, what, $1, what's pretty now? affordable now? I mean, you can get one for less than 1000 Oh, okay. Okay, that's, that's a step I forward. I think Vizio's doing it, actually. Busy, uh huh? Yeah. Okay, cool. I got a Walkman that still um, works, so. All right, a, Peter a, Quill, calm down. I have a Discman oh, somewhere yeah. over there. Discman. Um, <laughs> Does it have like the anti skip so, thing, like that button that never worked? Yeah, probably. Oh, that's I don't so know. Good. Um, really? So, with all of these things that Disney now, now owns, one, what are you most excited about? Oh, was that the end of that, or are you going to keep listing? I was going to let waiting. you answer, and then I was going to oh. continue. Superheroes. On the Superheroes, so. 
the things that will be More able to Marvel happen coming home with to Marvel. Marvel. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Actually, and I hate to stack on you, but the reunification of Marvel properties is probably the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a really positive thing. Yeah. Um, how do you think that's actually going to happen? I don't know. There are two things that are going to happen in my mind. Mm -hmm. All right. The one I'm hoping for and the one that'll probably happen. Mm -hmm. I'll start with the probably happen. Probably happen is they're going to reboot a lot of the X-Men storyline stuff. Oh, um, and they're they're just going to incorporate that into the stories as they're doing them now. What I want to happen, and I think there's a 2% chance of it happening, is pay a ton of money to uh, Greatest Show Guy and get exactly. him to come back on as Wolverine for at least a couple of films. Basically to smooth it over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To transition it, him or uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, oh, nice. Why I could, not both? No, or both. Here's the thing. Why not both? The, the amount of money you would have to pay to make that happen is, is ridiculous because they would hold all the chips at that point. But hey, they don't have money? to. But if they did, legendary. It'd be amazing. Do you think maybe they would come down a little bit in price just because Disney doesn't need them? No, I don't think so. Uh, specifically, Jackman has... Uh, he's done. He's diversified his career to the point where he doesn't need it anymore. He's really going the stage show route. He's and doing Music Man. He's doing Music Man on Broadway. To be completely honest, Patrick Stewart's going to have no reason to want to do yeah. this either because he's going back to he's Star doing, Trek. He's doing Star Trek, and he's also found a, a wonderful niche in his voice acting stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he has done so much work with Seth MacFarlane, who also is Fox. Family Guy's Fox, isn't it? So now they own Family Guy. Wait, do they own the Orville now too? Yeah, yeah, they do. Oh! That just that's Waka. even better. But, but, Star Wars is actually Orville Land. <laughs> but that's actually interesting. You thought it was the Millennium Falcon, but actually it's the Orville. <laughs> because Patrick Stewart, I know, has signed a pretty substantial contract with Seth MacFarlane, and Seth MacFarlane was owned by Fox mm -hmm. to do a certain number of things for yeah. them. I bet they could leverage that. If they I would to. love to see Patrick Stewart show up in Orville, by the way. I think that would be... <laughs> this ship looks ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and once, that'd be great. One sentence cameo, gone, great. They've had a lot of other Star Trek alum, so uh, it'd be cool. Um, how do you think this acquisition is going to change Disney? When you bring in something this big, it's inherently going to change, one, the culture, two, the output at some level, um, three, it's going to change competition. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming the release of movies is actually probably going to be less um, than the two companies had before. Y'all remember in Avengers Infinity War when Thor went to the Dead Star and reforged Stormbreaker yes. and then showed up at the Battle of Wakanda? Yes. That's Disney now. Just bring me Thanos, all so, that so energy. Who is, who is Thanos in this um analogy viacom international maybe comcast. uh yeah it's comcast yeah it's well that's the same right they're the same they viacom i thought they i uh, thought viacom and cbs were the splits i thought they owned each other i don't know Somebody any biscuits know. yeah this is why I, we need roger here i think True. i think you're right in that the release schedule will be less mm -hmm. however i think there's going to be a much bigger emphasis on futures now um i mean the the streaming service is a good example of that um, I think there's going to be a lot more, which is good for us, experimentation, uh, which I really enjoy because when you're comfortable, you can do weird things. And weird that like early 90s Disney did a lot of this. Flip side um, of that, though, is when you've just made this big of an investment, you cannot miss and you have to make some shareholders happy by making money quick. And, yeah. and the one thing I see as a risk for the Disney company right now is you made this huge acquisition and then you've got Disney Street or Disney Plus coming later this year, which they're flat out saying they're going to take a major loss on. Yeah. So those are two really big investments that they have to start turning around really quick. Otherwise, you can get yourself into some trouble. No, I, I don't think they're going to have a problem with I Fox. I think their I long think game is going to be fine. Yeah. But I also know that shareholders have pushed back more than I've seen in traditional years with Disney since... I mean, other than the big properties like the Marvel the stuff... Disney thing and um, leveraging some more of their avatar connections. Other than like the big pulls, I bet you they're going to sit on most of that Fox content for a couple of years. They're not going to change anything. They're just going to start accruing profits off of it. Like big example is The Simpsons. Simpsons, they, they're not going to touch. It's going to keep going. They're going to let that production company You know what the funny part about is. The Simpsons is? They're going to do exactly that. And the new Fox, I'm forgetting the name of it, is actually going to have to pay yeah, for to air it. its old company yep. to air it on it's what is it channel 13 and they're here? just going to keep collecting money off of that they don't have yeah. to do anything different on it it's it's a built-in system after a couple of years they'll make enough money off of it to leverage that connection and do something with it 
I think you're partially right. I think Bob Iger is going to push it harder. I, well, I, think, I agree with he's he's much more. Bob gung-ho. Iger is yeah. going to go for it. I think he's going to push some of the franchises to be more successful than they are, and if they're not, you'll see them go by, and um, and either that or they'll get rebooted or something. But I, I think he's going to be aggressive. One because I think he wants to retire at some point, and he's not going to retire until he's made it a profit and he's turned it around. And I think you're right though at the level where he's they have let. Um, you know, Disney doesn't generally go in and just change everything out at once, but I do think you will see a change that moves forward, and it'll get progressively more aggressive with probably every week, but who knows? And part of that will be just getting through the organizational structure of that many people. I think the biggest change, and I'm sorry to keep ranting, but I think the biggest change immediately is going to be some of their their digital (laughs) entertainment scape. Um, Because they've had some recent failures in that aspect, and it's one area of the Disney company that is not turning the money I think they would like. I'm looking specifically at uh, EA with uh, Battlefront 2. They just said Uh, they're sticking with them. But they're gonna right. they're gonna do other stuff with the new properties. Is what I'm saying. Oh, that's possible. Like the the, the stuff they've already got, it, it's fine. It's not making them any money, but it's fine. But they have an opportunity. I bet you they're gonna take a couple of indie developers, um, just because I see that's the one area of growth for Disney that they have not taken advantage of. It'll be interesting to see what they do there. Yeah, you see something on Twitter. Uh, Stephen Thomas says, "Come on now, Disney is Thanos. They've been buying up companies <laughs> with their Infinity Stones for years." <laughs> question is what happens when they snap their fingers we'll see who's still here um (laughs) (laughs) um, what are you most excited about with this merger i already said that marvel beyond that though like specifically what what do you want to see in two years i don't know you don't want another pandora you don't want another pandora is a bad idea to begin with they they made it work but it was a bad idea and that's to disney land way better than the movie to disney's credit they made something that should not have worked work Mm mm-hmm and we get some more of them coming, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, how do you think it's going to change the parks, and specifically the Disneyland Resort, since we live by it? I just want them to be able to say Marvel. That's all I want. <laughs> I know that they can't, because weird deals... Maybe that's what happens when they snap. Is that they can say Marvel? Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is that they can't say Marvel the brand, but they can say Captain, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, the name. was interesting. It's yeah. very funny. I love it. That is very Well, it's kind of like uh, the the Scottish play. As long as you're talking about Lord Macbeth, you can say that. That's true. But you can't say the Scottish play. They can say Marvel internationally. They can't say it USA. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I, that's what I want to see. go 12 miles away and you're good to go. Um, is there anything that uh, you hope won't happen with the acquisition of Fox? Won't happen? Yes. How about something that's in the works that they hope they, they cancel, which they're not going to? Which would be? The Avatar sequels. <laughs> that's such a bad idea. Too much money, yeah. It's They're going to make so much money, but it's such a bad idea. Oh, Isn't that an interesting thing, though, is is you think about how much money the first one made, mm-hmm. and and it's it's Pocahontas in space. I think and It made so much money because it was the first. It was the first to use that level of sophistication when it came to digital editing. But they can't are, top that. Unless they have something new. And you talk to everybody, and everybody goes, "Oh, just Avatar is so long." Yeah. Oh yeah, that was that's a good movie. It's an epic. I mean, like a uh, Braveheart. Braveheart is a good comparison. That is an epic. You cannot sit down and watch Braveheart anymore because you know how long Braveheart is. But it had it did something. Mm-hmm. Um, Avatar is the exact same way. It's om- almost more art piece than film now, despite it being devoid of art whatsoever. So but- as, as we move into the sequels of Avatar, mm-hmm. um, there's a portion of Avatar that I know you love so much with the robots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you mm-hmm. think it's coming back? And um, you can explain what it is first. Okay, I've ranted about this on the program before. But I'm but giving you the that. liberty to, to rant again so that Katie and I can poke the... Uh, the reason, the reason I harp on this so much is because it's an example of the bigger problem with Avatar. In one scene, uh, General Mick Krusty Butt, whatever his name is, gets into... Is that General Baldy? Yeah, General Mick, obviously bad guy, gets yes. into a mech uh, that, first of all, has no enclosure, cannot block him, and wants to wear a terrible defensive position. And he does the single stupidest thing in robot design in the history of film. Uh, after his gun is disabled on his arm, which is attached like any reasonable robot thing, he reaches to the hip of his robot, which is wearing a belt, and on that belt is a combat Bowie knife, which he draws and then fights uh, an avatar with. The robot is wearing a belt. Not attached, he's wearing a belt, and attached to that belt is an oversized, specifically made for the robot, Bowie knife. 
that he wields, not attached, but pulls out and draws with his robot hand to fight. It's it's the dumbest, most Watch action movie with thing. Fun. It's it makes me so mad. It, it does. It's you know the only thing that makes him matter. Um, title of the movie. Uh, the title of the movie in the movie. <laughs> if it's done well, it can be very pleasing. If it's done in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, it makes me insanely that was bad. mad. That was bad. How about Rogue One? Rogue One was pretty bad. I, um, I love it. Was pretty the bad. Row. Huh? It was really. We were all watching it together, and the entire row leaned forward and looked at me. It was very good. Was I hope that in Spider Man Far From Home, they go, "Hey, Spider Man, looks like you're far from home." Ba, 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 da. Yeah. yeah, I you hope. no longer uh, can see that movie. I, mean, I, I hope, hope that, that happens. happens. I hope that happens. All right. Well, there's gonna be lots of changes coming, and yes. I'm sure. I wouldn't be surprised a week from now we know more of these and uh, there's going to be staffing changes and production changes and who knows what else. Um, I think one of the most exciting is going to be seeing what the Marvel team does with this newfound realm of possibility and how they integrate them. And a note, this is actually a repeat of something that's happened with Disney before, um, which is uh, other companies outside of Disney. If you want some disenfranchised, amazing talent, there's going to be some co consolidation on both ends of the company. There's going to be a lot of free market folks right now that are insanely gifted that need work coming up very soon. A few thousand of them by the looks of it. Other companies jump at the opportunity because some of the best stuff, the entirety of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter came out of disenfranchised Disney people. Keep that in mind. Grab them now. Hire them. Pay them well. So Cedar Fair, get to work. Yep. True. <laughs> You never know. But you're totally right. Um, I saw this morning an article that said at least 4,000 or around yep. 4,000 will be unemployed in the near future. So, And it's an um, opportunity, folks. Like yeah, uh, every Blizzard, uh, I know oh, you yeah. just had your cuts, but grab them up. Like this, this is the chance for other companies to get amazing, amazing talent. Uh, speaking of picking things up, we're going to move along. And uh, in the new Toy Story 4 trailer, uh -huh. a new toy is picked up in the... Uh, a couple. How was that? Was that work? Does Great that work? job pivot right there yeah um so the new toy story 4 came out our trailer came out this morning it is um i think it's pretty much everything you would assume it would be when you're thinking of a toy story trailer yeah. can you talk about the problem with the trailer which one uh sentience of toys based on activation yeah why why can you just put googly eyes on a spork and then it suddenly has... Comes to life. No, not only does it come to life, it has problems with its existence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it grapples with why it exists. It, it doesn't seems want like to it live. already had the problem with its existence before the, the eyes no, were... No, 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 it did not. It oh, okay. says, I am made to have some salad and to be thrown away. Yes. He said maybe soup also. And, no, he says salad, soup, oh, maybe that's chili. What that's what it is, yes. I remember these things. And then thrown away. And then he throws himself off of a moving vehicle. They're, they're delving into territory that has previously only dealt with on, like, Rick and Morty. Yeah, they're, it's dark. They're, there's an episode where they have a concept of uh, the Meeseeks, Mr. Meeseeks, which their only purpose of existing is to fulfill whatever thing they've been asked for, and then they disappear. Existence is pain for them. Toy Story is doing that now. So my question is, what? is since we don't have a ton of time on this, um... Having seen this trailer now, are you more excited, less excited about the same? Far less for this excited. Movie? I'm gonna go less excited too. I'm I'm actually quite concerned because Toy Story three was such a home run. Yeah. And it was it was what? wrapping up a beautiful story with a beautiful little bow, and and I feel like they're re-entering and pulling from the original three movies, and taking it in a place that probably has a lot of risk. And in one of the risks that I'm not gonna say here because it might be a spoiler. I think is a risk you really don't want to mess with. We'll My see. concern is that I am the most nostalgic person ever. Them doing a sad rendition of You Got a Friend in Me and the Andy scene did nothing to yeah. me. I was just, I was more focused on all these other parts where when they brought in these nostalgic things, I was like, oh, well, I'm still stuck on the fact that Forky threw himself off a truck um, and his eye fell off. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so those just didn't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't... You're right, they're doubling down on some of this nostalgia stuff. Specifically, the, Woody has a line in this trailer that talks about, um, I was created for the purpose of helping a kid, or yeah. something. And I'm like, no, that goes against everything else the film has talked <laughs> about. Uh, and it takes away the sentience of toys, which is a core value of the movies. It's... On the flip mm. side, I feel like Pixar trailers are always 
Yeah, not yeah, and you're plus. probably right there. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I can't tell you how many movies going into the movie I'm like I don't know what I think of the trailers. Up. Yeah, up being a prime example. Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo being another good example. So many of these trailers, you you watch the trailers and I often walk away going, what are they doing? Like, I don't get it. And then I go into the movie and I'm like, oh, this is better than the last one. And quite often Pixar does that. Yeah. So I, there is this thing that they might have done, which I actually feel Avengers <coughs> is doing as well. Where they're they're giving us enough clips to really mess with us. Yeah. Yeah, and they're you, you, bringing that up um, brings up another thing. In this clip, we didn't see any of uh, Keegan Michael Key and Jordan Peele's character at all. Other than and, a foot, right? We didn't yeah, see yeah, the foot. yeah. I think th I think that's going to be their their uh, their back nine driver. Um, I have so much faith in those two creatives, and True. even if they're not in the film very much, having that kind of energy as part of the the cast and crew is going to speak a lot into it. And I think, it, first of all, I think it's a great choice for them to, to come on because they're the perfect shaking up element for, for the film in general, especially with Jordan Peele's success recently in uh, directorial roles. I think he's got a real chance to speak into the film uh, that could be very good. That and just the reactions of the, the voice actors as they finished their, their roles, I don't actually remember seeing that passionate of a response in the past. So I think there's, despite the confusing trailer, I think there's a lot of hope for this movie. And yes. um, yeah, the, this is what's difficult about Pixar is they always mess with you. So we'll see what they happens. Do. Um, another company that likes to mess with us is Marvel. And the Avengers Endgame trailer came out there by Tyler. Bye, Tyler. Hello, Luke. We are switching out producers for the next three minutes. Pinch Tyler. hitting for Geeks Corner. Okay, I'll text Number you. 21. Um, Tyler doesn't watch trailers. Why do you slam the door? Tyler doesn't do the trailer. He's being dramatic. Um, anyway, now we can say whatever we want about Tyler, and we're not actually going to talk about him. He's a giant nerd. How funny would that be if we didn't talk about Avengers Endgame for the next five minutes, and we just text, I can come back. <laughs> just we could, like, skip this He whole won't segment. watch the replay. No, I know. That's what's funny about it. Yeah. Is we can say whatever you want because he's not in the room. That's true. Anyway, but we're going to talk Finally. about Avengers Endgame trailer. Yes. Um, first off, what would you think of it? Just like your initial emotional response. So the gut punch that Toy Story 4 was trying to have with that nostalgia. Oh, the kick Endgame so good. did. <laughs> so good. They did. Yeah. They really did a great job of bringing back things from everything. In a stylistic way. In the MCU. Mm. Tying together everyone's stories in the black and white with pops of red and the way they that did was it. brilliant. Yeah, it was so good. And it was kind of one of those things that I almost didn't realize at first because it was like a little bit of red here, a little and then I was like, oh, wait, oh, no. Well, and then you know somebody's going through and trying to figure out what it symbolizes. Yeah. Like, how come Obviously. that person had red lips? Yeah, you know, like, I don't know. Uh, Cameron, what was your initial emotional response? This movie is going to murder us. Oh, it's going to be bad. Oh, uh, it's going to be... Or someone. Uh, um, we know, we know for a fact that this is going to be the end of uh, certain, characters. certain character. We don't know exactly who, but we know. Or how. Um, and we don't know... We know they're moving on from this, and so far they have set themselves up to give a wonderful final performance for whomever they're taking out. Um, I love about Marvel more than I like about many of the other comparative superhero franchises, they know how to put a period on things. Mm -hmm. um, they've done it a couple of times in the series, It's ne and it never feels like they're just always building to the next thing. They aren't afraid of finality, and um, I think that's the biggest thing going for Endgame going into this. Yes, there'll be things that go beyond this, but there will be definite gut punch final moments in this that um, that's how you make good art, is good art has to end. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely true. I think it's going to be a great movie. I think there's also tons of misdirection probably oh, in, this, absolutely. in this trailer, which I think is great. Um, and I can't wait to see this movie. I, was gonna say, I think the biggest misdirection, and it's going to be like Infinity War level of trailer, is the fact that we are seeing, and maybe it's not, but Steve Rogers on the battle suit in his original uh -huh. Captain America mm. suit. I feel like that's almost going to be the Infinity War trailer moments where we're like, oh, we saw we saw Hulk on the battlefield. And then, yeah, I think you're right. Whatever. But yeah, I, yeah, I'm very interested to see what makes it, what doesn't. And the assumption that so much of this film is going to play with time, just, um, it's, I mean, so much of that is out, out the window as far as that The only goes, thing right? I hope they don't do with this is set up a Star Trek Kelvin thing. Like a retcon thing or... 
I don't care. I don't want to go into a completely separate timeline so that they can redo things. No. No. Uh, um, I hope not. Actually, pretty anyway. consistently in, and this is me nerding about, out about Marvel. You have 15 the, seconds. They, they retcon things, but they always keep it in the same universe. If there are split universes, they'll go into them. But same universe, if you go back to the past, it affects the future. No split. Beautiful. Okay. All right. We're going to bring Tyler back in. Depth quest? Yes, that's exactly where we're going. I'm so thrilled. Uh, we are returning to a... Hi, we said nothing a, bad about you. We are returning to a... <laughs> <laughs> Will you? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> I was like, that's a pretty big risk, Mr. Cover My Ears and My Eyes in uh, Captain Marvel so I don't see the Spider-Man trailer. Um, anyway, is Mikey is our good friend down in Florida at Walt Disney World, and we are returning for a second season, I guess we could say. I'm so excited. Of, uh, Mikey really like he's Dap's Quest. Ready. None of us, none of us have seen this. No. Um, so whenever Tyler is ready, he's just gonna yell at me or raise his hand or. Okay, we're gonna see what happens with this. Let's watch Mikey's Dab. Hello and welcome to this new season of Mikey's Dab's Quest, the show where I'm challenged by the Geeks Corner team to do things around Walt Disney World. This time we're doing the Color Wheel Challenge. So let's get right to it. It was a cold and rainy day at Walt Disney World, but fortunately I didn't have to wait long until I got this nice yellow tram car. So I guess that means I can check yellow off the list. So I decided to then head on over to Epcot via the monorail and make our first stop of the day the Imagination Institute, where I was certain that the color purple was not going to be very difficult, even considering our purple friend Figment. So check purple as complete. Then it's just a quick jump next door over to Living with the Land, where the color green is definitely not in short supply. We can take a look. So check on green. Then I decided to take a nice long walk over to the Magic Kingdom. Lord, I didn't actually walk there, that'd be crazy. But I went over to Tomorrowland to ride the People Mover because I knew that blue would be a very prominent color. So, put a check mark next to blue. At that point, I was getting pretty hungry, so I decided to stop for a snack, and wouldn't you know, <laughs> there's red for you. So check red as finished. And finally, I knew I had to find orange. Fortunately, I knew the perfect spot. Big Thunder Mountain. There you go. Orange, done. So, that being the end of the challenge, it is now time to sit back, relax, and watch one of the most colorful shows of all. The Tiki Room. But now that I've got your attention, it's time for a new segment on Mikey's Stabs Quest, Mikey's Mini Quests. This quest is issued for Cameron. I recall, you mentioned that Skittles had a lack of gravy flavored, and uh, that Rainbows had a very particular gravy flavor. So, I challenge you to eat a bowl of Skittles with gravy. That's right. Bon appetit, my friends. So, until the next Mikey's Dabs quest, I'm signing out. See you soon. was the best one yet by far that that was great i can hear myself that's I'm obnoxious. Cool. I can hear myself. <laughs> echo uh that was awesome oh i'm so thrilled so we will make you watch we will <laughs> oh better than that we're gonna do it live on the show we're gonna make gravy for you we, we are have, gonna make it we will have skittles we have specific instructions on how to do this okay good um, and it did not come from us cool. this was completely um, mikey i'm gonna hire some professional operatic singer to sing pagliacci behind me while i do this as or long something. as it doesn't flag us for copyright great <laughs> um that that was really good mikey so good, good. Uh, i wish you could have heard us here in the studio because people were laughing through the whole thing it was really fun um if you have more ideas for mikey's daps quests let us know and after cameron has completed oh i've got his, ideas <laughs> um, we will come up with the next one for Mikey that we'll get soon. Um, final story very quickly tonight is James Gunn is back for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 um, in five words or less. What do you think about the return? James Gunn's back. All right! <laughs> good. <laughs> that, was, that was very good. A little 90s night there, yeah. Civility never gets old, dude. Dead. Cool. All right, and... and uh, you guys got it. I'm not going to try to 
make something as good as your guys. Um, anyway, that's all the time we have for you guys this week. You should go to thegeekscorner.com. That's the website that you are on currently. That's thegeekscorner.com. We talk a lot. It's there. <laughs> You should go to dapsmagic.com, check out all the Disney and Geek news as it happens, subscribe to our mailing list, and find our Patreon. And make sure to subscribe to, the, subscribe to this YouTube channel while you're at it, and uh, then you won't miss any of the videos that we're getting up. In fact, I think we have a new video of Captain Marvel arriving with uh, Goose and Rocket fighting that will be up in the next day or two. Um, it's very funny, but uh, that's all the time we have for you this week, so we will see you around the corner. Bye.